Hey guys, Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about how to use vitamin B3 or niacinamide, and this is how dermatologists implement it into our daily skincare routine or skincare routine for patients. So niacinamide, what is it? It's a form of vitamin B, it's vitamin B3. In foods, it can be found in things like fish, eggs, milk, leafy greens, for example, like beans. So you can get your daily supply of vitamin B3 through your foods, but for dermatologists, we'd like to supplement this using our skincare. And vitamin B3 cream or niacinamide cream or serum is super popular. It's been gaining popularity for the past five to 10 years. And I'll tell you why. It's because it is a very flexible skin compound to use. It's one of the most easiest skin vitamins to, to actually implement. Now, when you look at skin vitamins, we talk about the vitamins A, B, C, D, and E. Of all of these, probably vitamin A and vitamin C, in other words, your retinol and your ascorbic acid, they're the ones that are the hardest to use. The reason being is that these vitamins can cause untoward side effects, for example, skin irritation, redness, stinging, burning, etc. Whilst vitamin, for example, E and vitamin B, they're the ones that cause much less problem. So what does vitamin B3 or niacinamide do and how do we start it? What can it do for your skin? Firstly, it can treat acne. So if you have inflammatory acne, vitamin B3 can improve that because it's an anti-inflammatory. It reduces redness, reduces skin inflammation. It also treats pigmentation from acne. And importantly, if you have acne, you have compromised skin barrier function. So it helps repair the upper parts of your skin, hence healing your skin up from things like your pimples, your acne lesions, your cysts, and so forth. Acne is number one. Number two, rosacea or rosacea, acne rosacea. Rosacea is a very common condition. It's due to sensitive skin and it can present as redness on your skin together with uh, flushing, blushing and sometimes broken capillaries. So with rosacea, vitamin B3 is excellent because it can reduce skin inflammation. This is something which I ask my patients to use as a skincare additive or skincare um, part of their skincare routine more so than things like your retinols and your ascorbic acid for the reasons I've given you above. Another important anti-aging step I take in my nighttime routine is actually my pillow. It's well known that sleeping position has many benefits for your skin and your body, and it's not as easy as it seems. Sleeping on your back might seem to be logical, but most people can't do it all night long. And it can also increase the intensity of snoring and increase obstructive sleep apnea. The solution? Sleep and Glow Omnia Pillow because it's a unique 3D design that helps fight and also prevent sleep wrinkles. It also decreases morning puffiness and is actually super comfy. It is the pillow of my choice. It's got a three-dimensional design that supports the upper and mid face, reducing compressive forces on your face while sleeping at night. This in turn reduces wrinkling during my sleep as it is the mechanical compression that leads to sleep wrinkles and not dynamic wrinkling. So guys, this is me on a normal pillow. Notice the compression on my mid face and forehead area. It's this biomechanical compression that's also associated with sleeping. So guys, this is the Omnia pillow from Sleeping Glow. Notice how the face is cradled and supported. The sides of the pillow help minimize twisting and compression of the skin. No compression means no sleep wrinkles and no morning puffiness. This pillow also has an orthopedic effect. It ensures anatomically correct neck positioning during the sleep. Guys, check out the discount code in the description below. So we talked about acne, we talked about rosacea. It's also very powerful when it comes to anti-aging uh, because vitamin B3, like I said, improves your skin barrier function. And importantly, as part of the anti-aging, it can also have effects on what's uh, known as the melanocytes or the pigment producing cells of your skin. So vitamin B3 is a very potent inhibitor of your pigment cells. And hence, when you inhibit your pigment cells, you can have better skin luminosity, clarity, and as a result, less skin pigmentation. The other thing it can help with is with your skin barrier function. So if you have sensitive skin, for example, if you have eczema, so atopic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, you may have impaired skin barrier function. You can also have things like psoriasis. Vitamin B3 has been shown to actually improve your skin barrier function and hence makes um, irritated skin a lot better. So usually for that formulation, you're looking between two to 5% of niacinamide compared to other formulations which are higher for other causes, which I'll go through shortly. So dosing will be coming up very shortly. So last of all, it is very good for patients who have pre-skin cancer um, changes in the skin. 
So patients have had a lot of sun damage, vitamin B3, especially when taken orally, in other words, a supplementation that can even reduce the amount of sunspots by as much as 40%. So a diet high in vitamin B3 has been shown to be beneficial as it can be anti-aging, but also anti-cancer as well. In the context of skincare creams, vitamin B3, in the context of skin cancer prevention has not been well established, but taking it orally as supplementation has. And that dose is 500 milligrams up to twice a day. Now guys, how to start vitamin B3. So first of all, what concentration should we use? The concentrations vary between 2% all the way up to 20%. Now the higher the concentration, it comes to a threshold where the higher the concentration doesn't mean the better the skincare ingredient, the higher the concentration can cause skin irritation. So if you have super sensitive skin, you might want to start off with 5% niacinamide, most of the brands are around 10% niacinamide. And the great thing with niacinamide is that it goes well with most of your other skincare routine ingredients. So things like your retinol, your ascorbic acids, your skincare acids, and so forth. So vitamin B3 can be used either in the morning, but most of us prefer to use it at night. So how to start on it? It's pretty easy. Just use a good formulation of either a serum, a lotion, a cream, just put it on that night. It's as simple as that. So unlike vitamin A, where you have to slowly build up tolerance, or your skincare acids, where you have to build up tolerance because your skin may not tolerate the initial dose, generally speaking, for vitamin B3, you can dive right in because the chances of having an untoward side reaction or side effect for it is very, very low. So guys, that's vitamin B3 for you. In summary, start off with a good formulation, 10%, use it at night, it pairs up with just about everything. You can treat everything from acne, rosacea, to photo damage, in other words, sun damage, all the way to pigmentation. Guys, I hope you liked that video, it's a short one. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.